So we'll just go over some very brief stuff about normal, typical second language acquisition. So there's two major types. One is simultaneous bilingual development and the other is sequential bilingual development. So with simultaneous, the child is exposed to two languages, has significant exposure to two languages from birth or from early on. Um, the balance of the languages shifts. For example, you may have a mom who's taking care of the child and then an aunt arrives. The mom may go to work, may go to college, and the aunt may take over. Maybe that aunt has more of the L1. Maybe she just came from a country where and doesn't know English well. And so the balance will shift if that aunt starts becoming the primary caretaker of that little child. Sometimes children will avoid as they're learning difficult words or difficult constructions and really the, there's no dominance when a child is young. We try to put that on but linguists will tell you there's no dominance. Just the, the language shifts based on exposure very rapidly at, this, at a very young level. So what often happens is the child will develop two lexical systems, two vocabulary, they'll have vocabulary in L1 and vocabulary in L2, but they continue with these mixed utterances um, from both languages. So, but they might use the syntax of the language they have the most exposure to at that particular time. And then, then after a while they start differentiating the two linguistic codes, the L1 and the L2, and mixing becomes quite rare. Of course, the things uh, uh, influencing simultaneous bilingual development is the balance shifts depending on exposure, and there could be language loss. So here we have the mom was speaking mostly English to this child. Here comes the aunt from Romania. The aunt is only speaking Romanian. The mom is off at college or at work and all of a sudden the child ha may have almost a hundred percent of the time in Romanian. They might have had a lot of English and at 12 months old or 15 months old or 18 months old or 24 months old they might shift and now lose so much of the English and then Romanian would be coming up. Mixed language input can happen so both languages at the same time. You'll see this with children. Now you say, ah, oh, we're looking at preschoolers. It's very important in EI. Here's two reasons why we talk about it. One is, in EI evaluations, most people don't think about simultaneous bilingual bilingualism and whether there's language loss. What kind of process? What fluid process is this child in? Rather they say, oh, they've got delays in L1 and they've got delays in L2. Let's, you know, give them an EI. Um, uh, IFSP. But then you have also the other issue that as these children turn about three, they may still be going through this process of, of as a simultaneous bilingual and we're evaluating them at three. They have delays in L1, they have delays in English. If that's as far as we go, we actually end up with children being identified as having a disability, needing an IEP. Why? They may, they may actually have a disability, but the evaluator has no idea. If you didn't answer that question, if the child has delays in L1 and in L2 and in English, do they have a disability or a disorder? And you said yes, you have to look at this research. It's not, it's so, you have to read materials on this and acquire a deeper understanding. The second kind of bilingual development is sequential. And I'm a sequential bilingual. I learned Spanish when I went to Mexico at 19. I had no exposure to Spanish before then. So I'm clearly a sequential bilingual. Usually it's about three when people make the determination for whether they were simultaneous or sequential. So if you actually were a monolingual speaker of say Mandarin and you came and you were living in Chinatown and you're speaking Mandarin with your family all the way through and then you start kindergarten and you speak English, you would be a sequential bilingual because simultaneous, the break point is three years old. Some people, some researchers say actually the break point is around 18 months, but I go with the three year old point. Why? Because children are developing their uh, syntax and morphology up to about three years old and then about three that transformational grammar where they're starting to have all these complex embedded sentences starts to happen. So I, I use the three-year marker. Other researchers like Fred Genesee use the 18 month, month marker. So sequential bilingual development, here we have it. Child is 
Well, look at me at 19. I certainly was relying on English. I was taking any word that I knew in English and putting a Spanish sa sound system to it and hoping that it would work. Um, I remember one time going to uh, use the bathroom in Mexico. <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, we'd say restroom, where's the restroom? So I went up to these people, I go, where's your restroom? And they're like, we, we don't have a place where people can go rest. And I'm looking in the book, rest room, that's what I was putting together. I finally figured maybe I'll ask for the toilet and that sort of worked, but I learned fairly quickly, relying on English restroom in order to ask for what I want. It wasn't effective, so you learn fast. The other thing that happens is something called interlanguage. And I'll give you an example of my daughter, Caitlin, who's now 17. But back when she was a little girl, she came up to me and she came running up. She said, Mommy, I ran home. I thought, man, she's two years old. She's got the irregular past tense of run. She says ran. That's fantastic. She's a prodigy. <laughs> well, then a little while later, she said, Mommy, Mommy, I runned home. Now I thought, hmm, runned. Run is the present tense of the past, is the present tense of the verb run. And what you do in English, normally, regular, regular past tense, is you add an ED. So I runned. She actually was applying the rules of English grammar. She was showing me she had learned the rules of English grammar. So the first one, Mommy, I ran home, may have just been something she heard. And she wanted to yell it out. The next one, even though it was wrong, it was actually a demonstration of her language learning abilities. Mommy, I runned home. The next phase was, Mommy, I ran home. So she knew there was something funny about run. She knew something about the ran, but she kept on the ED because she knew that rule was very important in English. And then finally, she acquired the irregular past tense in ran. And so what that's interlanguage. Interlanguage is you're making assumptions about the rules of a language that actually are incorrect, but it really shows good language learning abilities. So if you hear a child say, run, and you go, ah, oh, they don't know the irregular past tense, you actually may be missing the fact that they actually have acquired deep understanding of what are the rules of regular past tense. Silent period happens to a lot of people. It didn't happen to me. That's uh, when I was 19 and I needed to use the restroom. So there was no silent period. I mean, I didn't know any Spanish and I was living in a Spanish speaking country with a family who only spoke Spanish. So I didn't have much chance for a silent period. But many times people who come to the US speaking another language will go through a silent period of three months, six months, sometimes a couple years. They know they don't get it. And rather than try to Make the, be willing to make the mistakes, they don't. And basically, it's more personality than anything else. So uh, my daughter's father, he was someone when his mom said, his monolingual, uh, he was a sequential bilingual, but he, so he's a monolingual speaker of English as a child. And his mom said that he didn't sp start speaking until he was two and a half or three, she remembers, you know, she remembered in her 70s, um, because she said, but when he started speaking, he spoke in paragraphs. Because he was unwilling, perhaps, I didn't talk to him when he was two and a half, he was unwilling to make the kind of errors that you have to make. Rather, he went through a longer silent period as a monolingual speaker and then launched into beautiful language phrases that, you know, what, what would have been late. And formulated, late utterance, formulated utterances, which are chunks. For example, my daughter saying, I ran home. So she doesn't have the deep understanding of the syntax, but she actually, uh, the, the syntactical rules of English, but she actually does pull stuff out that's really, that's my turn. I want that one. He hit me. Those can be examples of a deep transformational grammar, or they can just be chunks that kids pick up because that's what they hear and it's very important in their classrooms.